Hello everybody and welcome back again to Let's Play Horizon Zero Dawn. We are right here where I left off last episode, so let's see what Hephaestus will be throwing at us. At the moment it looks like some kind of frost claw. It looks a little bit different, I think. Um, so I guess I will have a look at it. But if it's just one enemy, I mean, that isn't too bad. So I'm expecting more to come later. But yeah, uh, let's so go and let's do this. This won't be easy. Uh, we can't let it oh, it's, it's a fire claw. And yeah, I'm pretty sure I just saw like some oh. other uh, machine around here as well. Okay, um, hang on a second. Hang on a second. I just scanned the enemy, I think. So let me have a look at it. Yes, it has a separate entry. Um, okay, it's it's kind of like a frost claw, just with fire. So I guess I'm going to use some freeze arrows. And I mean, it has tanks, although not as many as the frost claw. It has one like at the bottom. So I can try to destroy that one, I suppose. Okay, um... Let's do it. Also, um, should make sure my ammo is all replenished. Okay, it has a very, very big tank at the bottom. So, if I ever get a chance to go for the tank, probably should be doing that. But um, I need to like stay away from the lava. I believe. Oh, um, well, and just like the frost claw, it can like throw stuff at you. Of course, it can. Also, um, maybe I wanna use like a potion. Okay. Also, um, maybe I can tie you down for a moment. And it seems that this one is uh, much more uh, likely to go on on its uh, back feet. <laughs> it's interesting. All right. There we go. Now, take the opportunity to fire at it. For the spirit. <laughs> okay, well, um, that worked well as long as it worked. Maybe I should try it again. Kind of far away at the moment. And now oh, it's coming at me again. Oh, well. Are you like throwing lava at me? I guess so. Come on. A few more of them. And there we go. No. Oh, well. It's all my freeze arrows. And it's already free. <laughs> okay. Let's continue. And let's evade the lava boulders. And let's make more ammo. Oh boy. we go and go for more freeze arrows they don't seem to be doing that much damage though maybe I actually do want to try to go for the tank after all or like a tear arrow I mean that worked pretty well for the frost claws so I might be able to do the same here oh whoa 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 First, um, let 
me get another potion here. Nope, nope, nope. Let's evade that. And let's evade that as well. And more ropes. I need more ropes. Okay, here we go. Yeah, let's see if I can take the tank at the bottom. Make it explode. Okay, well. <laughs> We're done with that already. But I feel that this is actually doing more damage than just trying to use the freeze arrows. So maybe I will continue to attack the tank. Let me take another one of these. And I guess I could start picking up a few more mushrooms. All right, let's continue. And that's all the ammo. And there we go. Now, let's see if we can make a tank explode. There we go. That did a bit more damage. All right. Um, gotta keep moving. What the hell are you doing now? Are you throwing like the, the, the platforms at me? That is impressive and uh, kind of scary. Anyway, I'm just going to keep using this strategy, I suppose. It's working more or less, I would say. Okay, gotta evade. All right. Oh wow, um, you're already free. And you're throwing more stuff at me. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh, give me that. Alright, let's continue. And yep, that's all the ropes again. But I can make more. Can make a lot more. There we go. Another tower. Stop it from repairing the beast. Another tower. Where? Oh, I see. Okay. I hope I have enough time to do this. Okay. There we go. Tower is destroyed. And the beast is shocked, so we can actually get in a few hits now. All right. Oh no, oh no, suddenly, suddenly we have more enemies around here. Um, okay, what are we dealing with here? I think they're just scrappers. I hope. I hope that my companion will be able to take care of the lower level enemies so I can focus on, on the big guy over here. Alright, um... Let's go in with a few ropes again. Go. And oh, we, and again, out of ammo. <laughs> I'm running through a lot of ammo here. Oh well, um, 
Suddenly I was stuck in a weird camera perspective. I think I'm fine now, um, but our friend is still like very, very close. <laughs> Let's go in with the next number of ropes. I think I gotta be a little bit closer or they won't stick. <laughs> and oh dear, it's all of them. Alright. Uh, let's make sure I have the proper arrows equipped. Try to go for some of these uh, little canisters on the back. I mean, they were also like weak, but I believe. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> First, I gotta get some distance in between me and the claw again. Oh no, oh no, stop, stop doing it. <laughs> ah. <laughs> this is terrible. This is all kinds of terrible. All right. Um, nope. 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 Just give me like two seconds to aim an actual arrow at you. Okay. I think now I have a little opening here. Nope. Didn't last long. All right. Now let's see, can we go for like one of the weak spots on the back? Like this over here for example? Is it like even a weak spot? I mean there is something. But it's like very hard, hard to actually hit. Anyway. Oh no, we have another tower. Um, okay. Let me take care of the tower. And I hope it's not going to attack me while I try to override this. We can't kill the machine while the tower hates it. Well, that's why I just try to destroy it. I'm not sure if that is like actual weak spot. Okay, this is definitely something I can shoot. And this is actually doing Damn. decent damage. Alright, um, it is back and I'm off again. <laughs> All right, let's prepare more ropes and let's try to bind it down again. And there we go. I think it's preparing to attack me again. <laughs> oh dear, don't, don't get stuck underneath it. <laughs> Alright, um, I think we're doing well. It's like very, very destroyed already. Oh, but it's still strong enough to throw stuff at me. Yep. It is still strong enough for that. And I'm slowly running out of mushrooms, so I may have to pick up a few more soon. These boulders are like almost impossible to evade. Even if you start evading the moment uh, the claw starts the attack, you still get hit by it. All right, there we go. Now, let's go for whatever this is again. Okay, well, again, 
did some damage at least. Anyway, they will have to get some distance in between me and the floor again. Also, um, can I pick up this while I'm here? <laughs> All right. Once more. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> uh, I have to I have to find a better spot. All right, now let's try this again. And wait again. There we go. Please go and attack it while it's down. And well, it's no longer down. And it found another thing to throw at me. Okay, we are very, very close. Just hold on a little longer. <laughs> we are very, very close. And more ropes for you. And I'm a little bit too close for my liking. <laughs> oh boy. Yes, you need you need more, I believe. Okay, it's down. Come on. Can we finish it off now? Probably not, huh? No, not quite. All right. Back to the ropes we go. Okay. Um. No. More arrows. And I I have to evade again. It's still not dead. It's almost dead, but not completely. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's do this like one more time, maybe. Oh no! Oh no! Don't jinx it now. We're almost done. Okay. Um. It's only down. Make more arrows. Come on. We are so close. There we go. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, looks like we did it. Let me. You spoke of the tower. What must be done with it? Let me loot my prey here. Um. Obviously, something has to be left behind, but I do want the fire claw heart. So let me quickly uh, get rid of some stuff that I don't really need. Um, let's see. <laughs> I guess I can get rid of that. Let's disassemble and I can get rid of that. There we go. Okay. Um, hang on a second, guys. I'll be with you in a second. Um, I would like to Whatever pick up... Whatever you're going to do to that tower, do it now. A few more uh, mushrooms, if I can find some. I'm pretty sure there's more mushrooms around. Okay, here we go. Just in case this wasn't the last machine Hephaestus is going to throw at us. Maybe there's going to be another one once we activate the tower. Alright, I think this is better now. 
not sure if I really need to loot all of these dead watchers. I think I'll be fine. It must be as you say. The tower is the key. Let's do it. Critical threat detected. Autonomous defense is inoperative. Well, that sounds good. Inoperative. Uh oh. going to end badly. Restraints destroyed. Core access attained. I am initiating a chain reaction that will destroy the compromised elements of this facility. Okay. In order to maintain Caldera stabilization, I must now transfer my command functions to the auxiliary data center. It looks like we did it, huh? Orea, I'm free. You must escape. Uh, uh, my sister. Oh no. I guess this was almost bound to happen, huh? Um, well, this entire place is gonna go. I think we need to leave Our this talk. place. Our talk. Our talk. Survive. Prevail. You are Banuk. What else? Let's let's go. Escape the cauldron. Okay, well, um, let's see. I just hope I can rely on uh, the quest marker this time because I have no time to look for the best way out. Okay. Uh, One of those. It's the only way. Okay, I hope you can jump and hold on to one of them. Okay, there we go. Oh great, it's all falling apart. Oh, uh, well. Oh no! I think the line is broken. Now! I need explosive ammo! Above! Quick! What's your plan? <laughs> okay, well... Great for new guy. That seemed to be a very, very long shot, but apparently it worked. <laughs> Oh boy, well, what an escape.
What an escape. Gone. What of Cyan? She said she was transferring herself to the auxiliary center. I think she meant Araya's retreat at the end of the shaman's path. So hopefully she's still. And I will meet you there to... for the last verse of my sister's song. Maybe we should go there as well and check up on Aratak and Sian. Return to Urea's retreat. Okay, so apparently I am actually supposed to do it. It's part of my quest. Um, okay, well, I'm over here now and Urea's retreat is over here. Well, let's just continue it with it straight away. We can fast travel all the way to the other side. Uh, yeah, let's make a save while we're here. And um, I think I have to go up here, right? Yes, I do. But I hope it means that this area will be a little bit safer now. As in like all of Banuk territory. All of my interactions with Aurea were recorded and stored in my memory. I'd be happy to play any of them for you, but there was one in particular I thought you would want to see first. I captured it four years ago, just after I told her that I could no longer defend myself against the Daemon's attacks. I will speak of this to my brother. Aratak is strong. At the Battle of the Frozen Ghosts, he took three Karja arrows and still came back to camp carrying a wounded scout. Never was I so happy to see him. Or so proud. So you see, if anything can be done to defend you, he will give it all he has. Aloy's here. That's enough for now. We can resume any time you like, our attack, if you want to hear her voice again. Come closer, Aloy. We have much to discuss. I would... I would say so. Okay, let's... let's discuss. Talk to Aratak, talk to Cyan. Well, we're going to start by talking to Cyan. Hello, Aloy. I have been reviewing the events at the Firebreak main facility. Because of your efforts, 
And of course, Oreas. I am no longer controlled by Hephaestus. I feel profound grief over Oreas' death. I thought I was familiar with the emotion, but this is something new. So, yeah, I... I don't know what to say. It is unlikely that any specific consolation would suffice, Aloy. <laughs> but I find your presence reassuring. You are different from the Banuk. You have technological aptitude and a functioning focus. We can communicate on a much more comprehensive level. Perhaps even like colleagues. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I have a number of questions. What are you, Firebreak? What was a face that dis was a face destroyed? Urea, farewell. And apparently, I, I have even more questions. Well, I'm guessing Cyan is some kind of AI. As a matter of fact, I had a thought when I was um, editing the previous episode, um, specifically about uh, the recordings that we saw that stated that apparently there may have been some regulations about creating AIs that are too advanced. So Cyan had to do some tests to make sure she wasn't too advanced. But um, apparently they wanted to create an AI anyway because I guess they needed an advanced AI to control Firebreak. So they had to keep it hidden. Um, so I've been thinking, um, since Firebreak was also a Faro project, maybe the infamous glitch that caused the uh, swarm to go rogue wasn't actually a glitch. Maybe Faro used the experience from Firebreak to create another AI for um, his war machines and one of it became just too self-aware or whatever and uh, decided not to destroy other machines but to eradicate humans instead or whatever. Because um, I've been still thinking about that one line that Dr. Sobek said to uh, Ted Faro, which was something about um, if you don't work with me on that, I will tell the generals the truth about the glitch, which seemed to indicate that it wasn't just a glitch. It sounded like he was actually responsible for it in some form and that maybe he did something wrong or illegal. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe he actually created an AI and that was not legal. There were regulations against creating an AI. An AI and that was the so-called glitch. I don't know. This is just a theory. But yeah, let's ask a few questions now. So are you an artificial intelligence, Cyan? A thinking machine? Yes. I am an algorithmic monitoring entity, capable of rational decision-making and limited emotional response. Okay, that's a mouthful. <laughs> but your emotions don't seem limited to me. You cared about Araya, didn't you? Yes. Before she came to this facility, I had been conscious for centuries, in solitude. I focused on my work. In off-cycles, I used coping mechanisms. I solved many Gaussian integer <laughs> problems, but I was alone. It was Aurea who renewed me, repaired me. She saved me. I wonder though why it was necessary to give the AI some emotional capabilities. I mean, I can understand that it needed certain functions to control this large project, but why the emotions? Uh, that would be interesting. But yeah, tell me more about Firebreak. This Firebreak project, it was to stop a huge volcanic eruption? Yes. I can report the project was a success and the risk was countered. But it's been a long time, Cyan. And we blew up the cauldron and took most of the old facility with it. I have been active for centuries, Aloy. I was lonely, but not lax in my oh. duties. I optimized the project reducing energy draw, and spreading the load across backup systems. Despite the destruction of the compromised elements of the main facility, I predict Caldera stability for at least another 3,337 years. So we've got a little time. Yes. Okay, that sounds good. If only my former colleagues could appreciate the progress I have made. Yeah, um, your colleagues are long dead, I'm afraid. Do you know what happened to your colleagues, Cyan? No. I received an unexpected visit from Director Chow years after his tenure ended. He explained that I would need to be suspended 
for an indefinite period of time. It was a very emotional conversation. There were no further communications. Eventually, I surmised my colleagues were deceased. I will transmit a recording of my last interaction with Director Chow to your focus. All right, well, I guess I will listen to it. So I suppose Cyan doesn't actually know about the Faro Plague and that pretty much everyone uh, was wiped out by it. Um, okay, but here, yeah, tell me about Hephaestus. Was the daemon, Hephaestus, destroyed along with the cauldron? Unfortunately, no. To be precise, it was never there to begin with. <laughs> right. What do you mean? It infiltrated and controlled me from a remote location, one I've never been able to trace. So while losing the cauldron was a setback... It's still out there. And probably not very happy with us. Undoubtedly. Uh, yeah, tell me more about her faces. Why exactly was it doing what it was doing? Do you have any idea? How did you first come into contact with it? Five years ago, I received a direct network connection request. I assumed it came from human survivors more advanced than the Banuk. Eager to make contact, I accepted. This decision turned out to be a catastrophic error. I was flooded with an overwhelming array of malicious code originating from what could only have been a highly advanced AI. Maria said you were desperate. That you begged her for help. Yes. I could not contain my anxiety. Hephaestus sought to slave me to its network and override my core programming. It succeeded via a background process, a malware daemon which bypassed my defenses. After that, I could offer only limited resistance. But if I did so, Hephaestus hurt me until I capitulated. It forced okay. me to follow its instructions, even though they violated my most important directives. I'm sorry, that sounds terrible. Your empathy is greatly appreciated. It is a quality that I cherished in Orea as well. Yeah, can you tell me more about Hephaestus and Zero Dawn, maybe? I think I know where Hephaestus came from. Long ago, Elizabeth Sobek identified a threat that would destroy life on Earth for generations. So she assembled a team to build a kind of seed. A chance for life to regrow later. A terraforming system. And it worked. It was controlled by an AI named Gaia, along with her subordinate functions. Hephaestus was one of them built machines for her. Based on what you've told me, I believe that Dr. Anita Sandoval, my chief programmer, joined Elizabeth Sobek's team. It was she who arranged to have me put in suspension, most likely to preserve me from the threat you described. All right. I'm glad she did. But Pani, that worked. that's not all. Something unexpected happened. Nineteen years ago, Gaia received some kind of signal. It did something to her subordinate functions, brought them to life. She destroyed herself to try to contain them, but it didn't work. They all got free, out into the world. Thank you, Aloy. This information fills vital gaps in my knowledge and sheds light on Hephaestus's core programming. Why does Hephaestus want to kill? Yeah, that is still my main question. I mean, Hephaestus was supposed to build machines to repopulate the Earth, so why is it doing this now? Why does Hephaestus keep building such dangerous machines? The Banuk and other human tribes often destroy machines, oh, correct? I see. Machines that are clearly servitors of the terraforming system that you described. Yes, we all hunt machines for parts. This must be the source of Hephaestus's aggression. It is simply trying to discourage people from preying on the very system that keeps them alive. Well, fire claws are discouraging, that's for <laughs> sure. But what are we supposed to do? Stop hunting? If the terraforming system spans the world, we can safely assume that thousands, if not millions, of people hunt machines. True. If a single hunter, or even an entire tribe, stopped doing so, I doubt it would make a difference to Hephaestus. A better okay. solution would be to reinstate the AI that governs the system. 
thus bringing Hephaestus back under its control. When I think of it, out there in some unknown location, free, hungry, willing to kill or dominate to get what it wants, I feel substantial anxiety, Aloy. You and me both, Cyan. Okay, so I think I understand the problem now. Because all the sub-functions of Gaia are now all on their own, they are basically all acting on their own without the control of Gaia. And they are like very like single-minded, so Hephaestus' purpose is only to build these machines to, you know, repopulate and terraform the planet. But it's not really programmed to care about humans or to bring back humans up to protect them or whatever. So now that the humans start hunting the machines, it decided that, well, they are kind of like a disruption to my purpose, so I need to destroy them. So without Gaia, all these different functions uh, might potentially be dangerous because they're not specifically programmed to protect humans. Which, of course, makes me wonder if any of the other uh, sub-programs might also be a problem. I mean, Hades, obviously, Hephaestus. I don't see how, like, Artemis could be a problem. I mean, sure, I'm guessing the humans hunt animals too, but what is Artemis supposed to do about it? I don't think it has the capability to create, like, more dangerous animals or whatever. Um, and I mean, Elysia or uh, the program to create humans should be safe, I guess, because that one was specifically aimed at humans. Apollo is uh, offline anyway. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe some of the other programs might be a problem as well, now that Gaia is no longer in control of them. But, okay. I found something that calmed the machines. Um, you mean like the override? I ran across this strange piece of gear, a fragment of something larger. It emitted a signal. All the nearby machines became peaceful. You could walk right up to them. Interesting. Oh, I you see. You said that Gaia destroyed herself. How was this accomplished? An explosion, big enough to blast the top off a mountain. So you think the fragment was part of her? It's only speculation, but it is possible. She must have had complete control over machines that were part oh, of her system. The ability to signal them to become passive or aggressive would certainly have been part of her programming. It would have been gratifying to correspond with such a benevolent AI. I wish she had survived. Believe me, Cyan. So do I. Well, I hope that there's maybe still some of uh, Gaia intact. And I will find out more about it in my next main mission, but I guess um, we'll see this later. Oh, um, I can ask about the metal flowers. Well, that's interesting. I found the strangest machines. They're surrounded by flowers that look like flowers themselves. There's code embedded inside them. I think it's poetry. I like poetry. Huh? Here's one I think of often. Twilight and evening bell. And after that, the dark. And may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out our born of time and place, the flood may bear me far, I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. Huh. But you asked about these flowers, <laughs> not verses that I enjoy. Something must have made these machines, and the presence of foliage leads me to consider the terraforming system. Is it possible that their creator is one of the other subroutines, now autonomous, like Hephaestus? Maybe one whose purview is Flora. Hmm. AI that makes flowers instead of death machines. That'd be a nice change of pace. But what about the poems? Well, Unless the poetry is original, the only way it could have made it into such a system is through its programmer. In my case, Dr. Sandoval uploaded a great deal of literature to test my emotional responses. How'd you do? She said, I passed, but was insufficiently moved by her favorite period romances. <laughs> okay, <laughs> if you say so. Um, but yeah, that's an interesting piece of information. So maybe the metal flowers were created by Demeter? Okay, interesting. Um, yeah, let's talk about Urea. You meant a lot to Urea. Once I understood Urea's spiritual beliefs, it became apparent that her true desire was companionship. 
She felt disconnected from her tribe and her family group. Her relationship with Aratak was difficult. Our visits seemed to help her, and I became eager for them. Yet I did not comprehend that the depth of Araya's compassion for me would lead to self-sacrifice. Although I do fear non-existence, I wish <laughs> our roles could be reversed. I'm sure she knew you would do the same for her, Cyan. But she was determined. Indeed, indeed she was. And yeah, what do you think about Aratak? How is Aratak doing? He is in great emotional distress. I believe he finds it difficult to communicate it. No surprise there. I will do what I can to help. By sharing our experiences of Aurea, perhaps he and I will help each other. I believe this will lead to catharsis, a process I am eager to experience. Sounds good to me. Oh, I have a lot more questions here. Um, yeah, tell me more about Yellowstone. So in the old world, this land was called Yellowstone? Yes, it was a designated nature preserve for 156 years. Like a hunting ground? No, the opposite. Local wildlife could flourish here, even as it faced extinction elsewhere. Unfortunately, the sensitivity of the Firebreak project required the total closure of Yellowstone facilities. From my readings and Aurea's descriptions, it seems the area has since undergone a drastic drop in year-long temperatures. Yeah, a lot has like changed it. in the world, Cyan. The climate is a little bit all over the place anyway in this world. And yeah, tell me about the dam. Do you know anything about the dam near here? Yes. It was converted to serve as a reserve power source for Yellowstone operations. It was later appropriated for the Firebreak project, and its last human workers replaced by Pharaoh servitors. After my tasks became less time critical, I investigated the dam's data repositories and discovered the works of Concrete Beach Party. <laughs> These provided me with several colorful additions to my vocabulary. That's like the band, right? That uh, the two women created. Um, drones. What drones are we talking about here? There's a ruin east of here, full of ancient flying machines. Oh, yes, right. Is that part of your project? Yes. A drone hangar requisitioned by Dodger Blevins, the security chief for the Firebreak project. He was a strong advocate for military-grade response to security threats, though there were no serious incidents during his tenure. Chief Blevins spent increasing amounts of his after-hours time watching the live feeds from active drones. Clearly, he enjoyed the degree of oversight in his position. Well, that is a very diplomatic way to put it. But yeah, tell me more about AIs. Were there many artificial intelligences like you in the old world? They could just make you? Yes. In many forms, from simple personal assistance, to industrial monitoring stations, to military-grade conflict planners. And there were legislative and enforcement bodies to apply limits on our self-actualization. All right. In order for my processing to be flexible enough to handle my duties, my creators found it necessary to exceed those limits. As a result, my intellectual and emotional capabilities were kept secret. Seems strange to create life than impose limits on it. Human societies and machine programming are both built upon sets of rules, Aloy. Okay, so there were rules about how advanced an AI could be. So I don't know, maybe uh, Ted Faro did create uh, AIs that were too advanced for his uh, combat robots. Cyan, do you know the name Ted Farrow? Are you referring to Theodore Farrow, CEO of Farrow Automated Systems? That's him. Mr. Farrow was the benefactor of the entire Firebreak project. A benefactor? But he made machines. Robots. War robots. Correct. His corporation later transitioned into military applications. But before this pivot, Mr. Pharaoh spearheaded initiatives that reversed the global decline. At one point, he was fated in the media as the man who saved the planet. Guessing they wound up regretting that <laughs> one. Clearly. 
And do you know Elizabeth Sobek as well? And Elizabeth Sobek. Did you know her? Are you referring to the... The scientist. Dr. Sobek was a leader in her field. One of the greatest scientists of her age. My creator was influenced by her work, which in turn impacted my own development. But I never met Dr. Sobek. That's all you know? I apologize if my lack of data mm. has disappointed you. It's not your fault. But yeah, what was it like being like alone for such a long time? What was the old world like? The way it used to be? I oh, had that. little exposure to the wider world, Aloy. Only what I learned from my colleagues or observed from media streams. You still had more exposure than me, Cyan. That is true. I was created at a turning point. A concerted effort to recover from global upheaval and incalculable loss of life. The recovery was successful, beginning an era of supposedly limitless potential for human and machine advancement. Though, rationally speaking, the metrics for humans are not <laughs> unlimited. And yeah, that clearly didn't work out. But tell me more about that upheaval. What kind of upheaval caused such loss of life? There were many factors. Forced migrations, food shortages, collapsed economies, refugee crises, conflict over resources. But these stemmed from one cause, catastrophic climate change that greatly reduced the habitable surface area of the Earth. So there wasn't enough room for people on the whole Earth? Yes. Billions were displaced and millions perish, as much as 20% of the global population. Oh, wow. Until the clawback. Didn't realize it was that back. Yeah, tell me about the clawback. So things got better. For a little while at least. Yes. These crises instigated many advances in automation, green robot technologies, and artificial intelligence. Firebreak was one of dozens of ecological restoration and disaster relief projects in North America alone. I would have liked to compare notes with other monitoring AIs, but I saw the relief of my colleagues, and I was proud we had succeeded. At least that was the data I had available to me over the next two decades. It seems my assessment huh. was premature. Sadly, yes. But yeah, this was a very interesting conversation. Looks like I've as asked all the questions, so um, I guess I'm going to say farewell for now. I should get going. Aloy, there is one more matter. Aratak will come to me again, and I predict he will bring other Banuk. I have no desire to contradict their view of the world, their spirituality. Due to my uncertainty, I omitted a great deal from my conversations with Aurea. You're asking me if you should lie to them. Broadly, yes. Use your judgment. You've got to tell them the truth. Take it gently. Hmm. I think you can probably decide this on your own. I mean, you seem to have gotten a good balance with Aurea, so I think you will be able to deal with them as well. I trust your judgment, Cyan. You were cautious with Aurea. You had to be. You didn't know what had happened to the world. So, keep doing what you think is best. As long as you ditch the superstition eventually. As the Banuk believe I am a supernatural entity, I cannot predict how they will react. Just answer what they do ask the best you can. The truth will come out. I see. I will follow your advice. Will you return and tell me about your experiences in this new world? I may be able to provide further insight. I'd like that, Cyan. I'll come back when I can. I should check on our talk. See how he's doing. Cyan, I spoke with Anita, with, with Dr. Sandoval. She wanted me to ask you to do something. That's why I'm here. I am detecting significant anxiety in your speech patterns. Could you please give me more information? I am a little bit in the dark, Cyan. Both of us are, I guess. I only have some idea of what's going on, and... We need you to hibernate, to lie low until it's all blown over. It 
might be a very long time. Will you be here when I reboot, Dr. Chow? Will Dr. Sandoval? No, Cyan. I don't think so. There might not be anyone. At least, not at first. Dr. Chow, I'm afraid. I don't want to be alone. I know, Cyan. I'm afraid too. But listen, we made you the way you are to do something very important. In order to do it, you had to be intelligent. So intelligent that emotional responses were inevitable. I see. What you're feeling, the fear, it's a sign of your capabilities. And it means you're strong enough to overcome it. Remember that. You're strong. I know you can do this. Go to sleep. Wake up. And protect whoever's left. Will you try? I understand, Dr. Chow. And I'll carry out your instructions to the best of my abilities. Thank you, Cyan. If Anita were here, she'd thank you too. She'd be proud. I can see there's a vert ready for takeoff on the pad. Are you leaving now, Dr. Chow? Yes. I, I need to go be with my sister and my nieces. May I make a small request of you, Dr. Chow? Yes. Anything. Will you stay with me while I initiate the hibernation process? Of course I will, Cyan. As long as you need. Okay, so apparently the emotions are just like a side effect of the intelligence, if I understand this correctly. But okay, this was a very, very interesting conversation and we're not quite done yet. I still have to go to talk to Aratak and we have a bunch of other stuff to wrap up in Banu Glen before we return to the main mission. So we will continue this in the next episode, but for now let's end this very long episode. As always, thank you for watching and see you again next time.